Buongiorno and benvenuti alla Geografia d'Italia. Welcome to Italy's Geography. Oggi parliamo delle regioni d'Italia. Today we're talking about Italy's regions. Ci sono 20, there are 20. And I'm going to go through each regione, each region, and give you a fun fact about each one. What you're going to see on the next slides are carte geografiche, maps of Italia, with each regione, each region identified or highlighted. So you know exactly dove sta, where it is in Italy. Italia is broken down into tre parti, three parts when it comes to its regioni. There's Nord Italia, Northern Italy, which is made up of these otto regioni. Then there's Centro, Central Italy, and of course, Il Sud, Southern Italy. The first regione is Piemonte. Ever heard of a Fiat car? If not, there is a picture. And these cars are manufactured in Italia and distributed all over the world. Maybe you've seen one locally. Next up, Valle d'Aosta. Fun fact, it's Italy's smallest region, and it's known for Monte Bianco, which is the highest point or the highest mountain in Italia, also known for skiing. Lombardia. Here we have Italy central for fashion and economy. So if you've heard of places like Dolce Gabbana, Prada, Gucci, or Milan Fashion Week, this is where you'd find it. I also took a couple of my pictures to share with you guys if you're soccer fans. Um, it's also the home to one of the biggest stadiums in Europa and Europe. I did have the opportunity to tour it. It is home to AC Milan and Inter Milan. And here we have a couple of pictures of a famous Duomo or Dome church uh, in Roma as well. And you can climb all the way to the top. It's so cool. Trentino Alto Adige is known for bordering Austria, Austria. They're known for their food. Every region is known for their food. But specifically in this regione, they have the Austrian influence with apple strudel, but also polenta, which is a typical winter Italian dish. Veneto. Many of you have heard of or we've talked about Venice before. It's that città, city on the water. And this is actually a picture I took from my last trip there a couple years ago. This is what it looks like when you fly into Venezia. This here. It's kind of like the, it's actually the train that can bring you there, um, but there is no street. There are no cars in Venezia. Like I mentioned before, it is a città on the water. This is a street. Um, you can see there are boats that will bring you from point A or point A to punto B. Some other pictures I have in Venezia. This is their famous church. Italy is known for all of their famous churches because they are all famosi, all famous. Uh, Ponte Rialto is also a famous bridge um, in Venezia. Fruli Venezia Giulia borders Slovenia, as we talked about in Scuola, known for skiing and their phenomenal coffee. Liguria, known for flower production and also home to this famous Italian. Can you see the nome, the name written up there? This is a picture from my travels. This is where Cristoforo Colombo, Christopher Columbus, was born before he went to go work for Gli Spagnoli, the Spaniards. Emilia Romagna. If anyone's had Parmesan or heard of Parmigiano, this is where it comes from in Italia. And for those of you car fanatics, uh, we talked about Fiat's earlier, but Ferraris, I'm sure everyone's heard of. They are also produced in Emilia Romagna. There's actually a Ferrari museum that you can go and tour. Haven't done it yet. It's on my bucket list. And here we have Emilia Romagna. Now we're moving into Central Italia, broken down into these sei regioni. Now bear with me because there's a lot happening in Central Italia. Toscana, or Tuscany, as some of you might know it, is the center of the Renaissance. The Renaissance is a fancy word for the rebirth of art. Now, what I mean by this is pre-Renaissance, pictures were really, really um, dull, to put it nicely. With the Renaissance, what the artists did was they made the artwork come to life. Well, they added more detail to the artwork. So they have more detail in the hair, in the muscles, in the eyes, in the teeth, and the skin. Um, I'll show you a picture in a few minutes. Uh, Firenze, Florence, is the most famous città city in Toscana. 
And of course, a lot of you have heard of that Leaning Tower of Pisa, which is a city in Toscana as well. So when people say, oh yeah, I'm going to Tuscany, it's kind of like saying, yeah, I'm going to Massachusetts. But like, where in Massachusetts are you going? You know what I'm saying? So here we have Michelangelo's Davide, David. This is the statue David. Michelangelo, not the Ninja Turtle, sculpted Davide out of a block of marble. So when I talked about that whole like renaissance or bringing art to life, literally what I mean here is like his hair, you can see in curls, right? Um, holy smokes, you can see a vein. Just kidding, it's marble unusual and honestly this kind of artwork was scandalous for the time. Capital Firenze uh, it's known for a lot of other hot spots like the Ponte Vecchio which is known as a bridge for selling gold. Literally all of these little stores just sell gold, gold, gold. The Baptistry is another church, of course, I've already mentioned one. So now we have a bell tower and um, the actual church itself. It's known for this dome here. Uh, it's called the Duomo, which means dome, because at the time, they didn't have all the technology we have oggi today. So it was even more challenging to build. If you go inside the church, you can actually climb all the way to the top. And this is my picture of me climbing all the way to the top. Uh, and this is the view that you see when you look down. It's pretty high, not too bad, but definitely worth the, uh, the sweat. This is the inside of the dome. It's all painted, as you can see. And this is what it looks like um, eye to eye level. So beautiful. Florence is my favorite city hands down. Leaning Tower of Pisa, believe it or not, it is a bell tower. See, there are bells at the top, and it took about 200 years to complete. It began to sink during construction, which is one of the reasons for its tilt, because it was actually built on sand, and of course, it's made out of pretty heavy material. Um, they did have to close it down not that long ago to move the building to make it a little bit more straight, but only by a couple of inches. It is now open to the public. You can pay to climb all the way to the top, which is exactly what I did. And it's really, really cool to see. We have a medieval horse race that happens in Siena. People from all over go and visit during this time of year. It only happens twice a year. And this is what it looks like without the horse race in action. I've been to Siena. I've never been during the horse race, but it sounds pretty cool. Umbria, fun fact for you, it is the only landlocked region in Italy because everything else touches aqua, water, and by landlocked, I mean like, you know, I know there are these ones up here, but they're not in the actual peninsula itself. It's known for these chocolates, Bacci, which if you've ever gone to like TJ Maxx, Marshalls before, they actually sell them there, Market Basket as well, um, chocolate with hazelnut in the middle. Marche, home of Raffaele, and no, I don't mean the Ninja Turtle. I mean Raffaele the artist. Uh, Rossini was a super famous composer, if you're into musica, if you're a band or stringlet, a bandit or stringlet. And a piadina is a type of food. Um, it kind of looks like a pita pocket, and man, are they good. Lazio, bear with me because there is a lot to talk about in Lazio. The capital of Italia, as we know, is Roma. In Roma, there's a lot of stuff to see and do. There's the Colosseum, home to the Roman gladiators, Spanish Steps, the Pantheon, and the Trevi Fountain. This is also a home to the Vatican City State, which is actually its own paese, its own country in Italia. It's the Roman Catholic Church. You might have heard of St. Peter's. It's home to Papa Francesco, Father Francis, Pope Francis as well. This is what it looks like inside, uh, home to the Pope. I was going to say, it is pretty dope. Um, and of course, artwork done by Michelangelo, other artists. This is when you walk in, the ceiling, everything is just painted and doused in gold and marble. You can climb to the top of the dome, and this is what I did. Uh, it was hot that day, but definitely worth the view. Off in the distance, you can definitely see this is the Pantheon, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. Um, and all of these little dots over here, yeah, those are people. That's how high up you are. They look really, really small. 
Colosseum, you know, is the Roman gladiators um, where they had contests and battles. And yes, you can go inside today. This was from maybe six or so years ago. You can see what it looks like on the inside. And there are three levels, which is pretty cool. This here was on the second level. And then this is all the bottom level, which you got to go to. Charity Fountains, one of the most famous ones in the world. They say if you turn around and throw a coin into the Trevi Fountain, you will visit again one day. Pantheon is a temple to the Roman gods. It actually buries two Italian kings, and it's shaped like a dome. You can't really see it from this picture. But here um, you can see that there is this light that comes on in. Another fun fact about the Pantheon. But when it rains, the water comes in also. There are actually holes in the ground where the water will go down, kind of like the first uh, sewage system known to the world. Thank you, Italians, for that. Abruzzo, um, special place in my heart. This is where I go when I visit Familia in Italia. Uh, is known for arrosticini or lamb skewers. If you've ever had like a kebab, um, a shish kebab sort of thing, they're skewers on a special grill that are made. Um, they are... So good, you just can't think about the poor little baby lambs when you have them. Molise, known for their Jordan almonds, we call them in Italiano confetti, almonds covered in sugar. Southern Italy, we have the Sei Regioni. Puglia is known for being Italy's heel, right? Because you can see it here, it's the heel of the boot. Also known for these truly houses, they're little huts that you can go visit and even stay in. Campania, Napoli, Pompeii, Vesuvio, home to the Pizza Margherita. Legend has it that the Queen of France went to Napoli and was hungry. So the chef du jour of the day said that they would make her a special dish that represented Italia in tre colori, in three colors, rosso, bianco, and verde. Italy's flag, right? Rosso is the sauce, bianco is the cheese, and verde is the basilico. She loved it so much, they called it a pizza margherita. Her name was Queen Margherita. Here we have Campania, Napoli, Vesuvio, which exploded and destroyed the town or city of Pompeii. We also have the Amalfi Coast here, which is fancy schmancy. I was able to go visit Duanipa two years ago. More Sorrento of the Amalfi Coast. And here we have Pompeii. This is the entrance to Pompeii. And as you can see, it looks pretty good now, but this entire place was covered in tar or lava. Um, of course, they still have statues and artwork that are there. Um, this here to the far left used to be a bakery, as you can see the archway here. Of course, this is a mummified persona person because the volcano erupted in the middle of the night. No one knew what was going to happen. Here is actually a ristorante. The tour guide was telling us that um, in the second to last and last pictures, all of these circles here were uh, where they would keep the food warm um, for people that would be hungry and want to eat out even way back when. A couple of other fun facts about Pompeii, even way back when they had street signs, but they didn't actually use words to uh, identify their streets. The original street signs had pictures, and of course there's a word underneath now. And of course, last picture to the right, Vesuvio in the background. Basilicata is known for the city of caves in Matera. Calabria is Italy's toe and known for the Albanian influence. Albania is a paese, a country, that is right across the mare to the est. Sicilia is Italy's, Italy's soccer ball, right? Kind of looks like Italy's kicking it. Known for il cibo, the food, cannolis. Uh, I'm sure most of you have heard of these before. They do sell them at Market Basket. Um, a uh, a shelled a shell, a hard shell, filled with ricotta is the typical filling, but some people fill them with crema cream, chocolate cream, um, chocolate chip cream. Delish. Last but not least, Sardinia, known for its beautiful beaches. As you can see, the water is divine, um, and specifically the Costa Smeralda, the Emerald Coast. Big money to go visit Sardinia, as you can tell, lots of boats, lots of yachts, um, and just 
And that is the end of Le 20 Regioni d'Italia, the 20 regions of Italy. I'm curious to see which one you find most interesting to visit.